It's August or September and school season is just right around the corner. Whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, starting engineering university can be very stressful. So I made this video to serve as the ultimate back to school guide to help all of you mechanical engineering students out there prepare for university. Once you receive your university admission letter into engineering, you are excited and optimistic about starting a new chapter in your life, perhaps in your favorite city far away from home. You chose to study engineering for the money, job security, and prestige, and because you were good at math and physics in high school. But within the first week of classes, doubt and anxiousness start to creep in quickly as you find out that you are totally unprepared for university, and some of the horror stories that upperclassmen have shared with you, like the brutal 100-page lab reports that they stayed up an entire week for to complete. Engineering is without question hard and requires a lot of dedication, but with the right preparation, strategy, and execution, engineering is totally doable. I'll talk about the essential school gear, study techniques, time management, internship guide, and mindset that are essential to making it through university and finishing on top. Starting off with school supplies, the laptop you get will be important for getting things done efficiently. Based on your budget, use case, and preferences, there are several tiers you can choose from. If you're looking for a solid budget laptop under $1,000, I recommend getting an MSI GL65 or Acer Nitro 5. Because these are relatively cheap laptops, keep in mind that the build quality may not be as good. Throw in a couple extra hundred dollars and you can get yourself a Dell XPS 15, HP Omen, Asus Zephyrus, or MSI Creator M16. Most of these are gaming laptops that will provide you with the optimal specs to run memory intensive CAD and simulation software. Finally, the MacBook is the most expensive laptop on this list for its aesthetic design, high quality build, and superior battery life. If you're studying software or CS, then a MacBook is an exceptional choice. However, I advise mechanical, electrical, chemical, civil, and industrial engineers to stay away from MacBooks because most engineering software only support Windows OS and will not run on Mac. However, if you're a huge Apple fan, you can get a MacBook and use Parallels which will allow you to run Windows apps on your Mac. All of these laptops will get you through university, so just pick one that fits your needs. Links to all of these laptops can be found in the video description below. Second, let's talk about calculators. As an engineering student, you have to take a lot of math courses such as calculus and differential equations, as well as engineering courses dealing with a lot of advanced math. So having a good scientific calculator is very important. I personally use the TI-84 Plus graphing calculator that has many cool and powerful functions and is extremely lightweight and durable. It's also the number one calculator used by STEM majors. Another really good cheaper alternative is the Texas Instrument TI-30XIIS scientific calculator. To be able to use your calculator effectively to solve problems, you'll also need to have a strategy to understand all of the complicated abstract concepts in calculus class. Obviously doing practice problems from your textbook is a must, but it can get pretty tedious. So there's actually this very fun and easy way that I use to help me master all of these concepts more effectively and efficiently. Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video, is the ultimate platform for interactive learning in math, science, and engineering. With a plethora of engaging hands-on lessons spanning from fundamental to advanced topics, Brilliant continually adds new content every month. Whether you're starting from scratch or seeking to build upon existing knowledge, Brilliant tailors its contents to fit your needs, providing the flexibility to learn at your own pace on your phone, tablet, or computer. Having personally completed all of the math courses on Brilliant, I can attest to their transformative impact. The bite-sized lessons and well-structured learning paths not only help me concentrate on crucial concepts, but also significantly enhance my information retention compared to traditional lectures. One of my favorites is their Integral Calculus course where you explore how integrals are used in engineering to solve real-world differential equations, describing the motion of a falling object such as a spacecraft and an electric potential generated in neurons that relay information through the nervous system. Try out everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days using my link brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild listed in the description below. The first 200 of 
you will get 20% off Brilliant's premium annual subscription. Now let's move into notebooks. University professors teach at a really fast pace during a lecture. They will derive equations, do problems, and write down concepts on a blackboard. You'll not only be writing down numbers and words, but also drawing a lot of schematics, graphs, and sketches. I had a notebook for each class, specifically the engineering and science notebook by National. This is by far my favorite notebook because on a left there's graphing paper and on the right is college rule paper perfect for keeping your notes clean and organized now if you decide to go paperless then i recommend getting an ipad and downloading a note taking app such as notability or good notes one other thing you'll need in your bag are textbooks almost all classes in university have a textbook that the professor requires students to buy save some money and just buy them used on amazon ebay or any site you can find the only book i recommend buying new is machinery handbook. This is a must-have if you're going to be studying mechanical engineering and contains all the important concepts that you need to know as a mechanical engineer including math, mechanics, material properties, machine elements, machining, tooling, and more. You can get a copy for around $85 on Amazon. This book will serve as a reference throughout your entire mechanical engineering career and will be one of the best investments you'll ever make. Link in the description below if you're interested. Cheat sheets are also great supplements to textbooks and act as a summary that you can leverage to quickly review concepts for an exam or interview. I always encourage students to make a one-pager cheat sheet for all of their classes. It helps you to retain the information and see the big picture by forcing you to focus on key concepts. To help you guys out, I went back and summarized my notes in university and created a one-page cheat sheet for each class that you can use to review for exams and interviews. Link in the description below if you're interested. Now let's talk about some effective study techniques. Most engineering classes have weekly quizzes that take place during a lecture, a midterm during the middle of the semester, and a final exam at the end of the semester. Quizzes generally test your understanding of the material taught in the previous week and have one to two questions that are similar to the ones on a homework set or problems covered in lecture. Redo these problems one or two days before the quiz and make sure you understand the assumptions that are made as well as the equations and concepts that are involved. Don't just memorize the solutions for each problem problem. Now exams in university vary a lot based on the professor and the course. From my experience there are three types. The first type is ideal and are very similar or even identical to past homework problems. The second type includes problems that are completely different than past homework problems and much more challenging. However they still require you to apply the equations and concepts taught in class but perhaps in a more non-intuitive way. And the third type is a take-home or open book exam. To do well on your exams, your study technique should involve doing homework problems multiple times until you understand the underlying principles and concepts. Instead of waiting right before an exam to cram, periodically review past homework sets once every two weeks to commit the information to your long-term memory. The science shows that spaced repetition produces stronger memories than repetitions massed closer together in time. Let's say the professor teaches a stress strain curve in lecture. It's likely you'll retain the information for the first couple hours and subsequently notice a huge drop in your memory based on Eibenhaus's forgetting curve. But if you go back and review the material and do several stress strain curve problems, say every one or two weeks, the information will be reinforced in your head. You don't wanna wait for your recall to slip so low that you're essentially starting over. One other strategy that gave me an edge when it came to exams that asked curveball questions was picking four or five relevant challenging problems from the textbook to do each week. If I got stuck on any of the questions, I would go ask the teaching assistants or use check for hints to point me in the right direction. Now let's talk time management. And no, I'm not talking about squeezing in a Netflix episode between lectures. There are so many distractions in university, so keeping track of time and maximizing your efficiency will prevent you from looking like this. Two techniques that have proven effective for me is the Pomodoro technique and deep work. For example, if you need to write a 100 page lab report, you can use the Pomodoro technique to break your work into manageable chunks. 
Set your timer for 25 minutes and work as hard as you can. When time is up, take a five minute breather and repeat the process until you have done this four times. After four Pomodoros, take a longer 15 to 30 minute break and then start another round of four Pomodoros or until the task is complete. Now the Pomodoro technique may not be for everyone because it doesn't give you a chance to go into a state of deeper focus. So another technique that you can try is deep work. Deep work is all about creating the right environment for you to work in, shutting yourself off from distractions so you can focus for as long as necessary. It might also mean shutting off your phone or disabling your internet access. You need to prioritize tasks and choose a time slot each day for each task, making it only as long as it absolutely needs to be. Lastly, you need to plan out all your daily work by using a calendar. At the start of each semester, I like to go through all of my course syllabi and jot down the key deadlines for all of my classes on a single page like this so I can easily keep track of everything. I'll then transfer these dates onto a calendar and plan out how much time I need to give myself to complete everything. You can also schedule study sessions, clubs, and downtime on this calendar. Using these time management tips and tricks will be a huge game changer in university. Now let's fast forward a bit and talk about internships. The golden ticket to real world experience. Start searching early as a freshman or sophomore, tailor your resume for each internship you apply to, and create an engineering portfolio highlighting the key projects you've worked on. If you don't have any experience, you can work on your personal projects or join student engineering clubs such as robotics, rocket propulsion, or formula racing, and and include that experience on your portfolio. Make sure you include all the relevant skills and experience listed in the job description on your resume. So far, I've had the best luck applying for job positions on LinkedIn and through my university's career job portal. When you do land an interview, remember that preparation, attitude, and confidence are key. Showcase your skills, ask good questions, and let them see the passionate engineer in you during an interview. Now, one of the most challenging things about mechanical engineering technical interviews is you never know what the interviewer who could be an engineer, engineering hiring manager, or panel of engineers will ask. Now mechanical engineering technical interview questions are either very specific or have to do with technical challenges that the company is currently facing and this was one of the biggest roadblocks that I struggled to overcome as an engineering student. These companies are essentially using you as a tool to help them solve their problems for free. Then there are those questions that you would only be able to answer if you've done a lot of technical interviews in the past or if you worked as an engineer in industry for a year or two. Unlike coding technical interviews where many of the questions are transparent on platforms like LeetCode or Algo Expert, mechanical engineering technical questions vary significantly from company to company and are way harder to prepare for. To help you guys out, I put together a list of 80 technical questions spanning all aspects of mechanical engineering that I think are great to know and hopefully will help you land your dream job. Keep in mind that the solutions are not included. I think it's very important for you to think through problems yourself, which helps you better prepare for interviews instead of memorizing answers and regurgitating them during an interview. So for those of you who are interested, check out the link in the description below. Lastly, let's talk mindset. Engineering is hard and it's very easy to feel discouraged or have the perception that everyone is smarter than you as a freshman. However, you later find out that most students feel the same way and are in the same boat as you. If you didn't do as well as you wanted to on an exam, don't dwell on it too much. Learn from your mistakes and move on. This will help you focus and do better on the next one. Always remember that engineering at university is a marathon, not a sprint. Embrace the challenges, learn from your failures, and celebrate the victories no matter how small. Maintaining this positive mindset is critical and will drive you to success. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my video here where I talk about everything you need to know before getting into mechanical engineering. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.